Hi, in this video we're going to look at set notation for Venn diagrams. Venn diagrams are these diagrams with these circles um, which allow you to categorize um, different items. They might be numbers, they might be shapes, um, different things that can go in your Venn diagram and be categorized. The first bit of set notation we're going to look at is this strange symbol here. Um, it's a Greek letter, I think it's Greek, set, Greek, Greek letter Xi but I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Um, I'm going to call it the sort of curly E thing. Um, and the curly E thing tells you all the numbers that need to go in your Venn diagram. It's called the universal set. And in other words, it means all of the numbers or all of the elements that you're going to be talking about in this diagram. So somewhere in my Venn diagram, I have to put all of the numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 but I don't know where they go yet. In order to find out where they go in my Venn diagram, I have to look at this notation here. Now this notation, with the curly brackets, just tells me that I need to put all my odd numbers need to go in circle A, and all of my factors of 8 need to go in circle B. So let's just recap. All of these numbers need to go in the Venn diagram. The odd numbers need to go in circle A, and the factors of 8 need to go in circle B. Let's go through the elements one at a time. Number 1. Number 1 is an odd number, but it's also a factor of 8. So it goes in the middle. Number 2 is not an odd number, but it is a factor of 8. So it goes in there. Number 3 is an odd number, but is not a factor of 8. It goes in there. Number 4 is not an odd number, so it can't go in A, but it is a factor of 8. Number 5 is an odd number, but it is not a factor of 8. And number 6 is not an odd number, it's not a factor of 8, so it goes outside the circles. So things to remember when drawing that Venn diagram were that the squiggly E thing called Xi contains all of the numbers that need to go into your diagram. The curly brackets just tell you which numbers belong to which set. So the odd numbers belong to set A and the factors of 8 belong to set B. Here's another example containing some slightly more advanced notation. Once again we have the universal set. All of the numbers in my diagram are going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. They all need to go in this diagram. And then I have this strange U symbol, A, U, B. And that U symbol means union. And really what it stands for is the numbers that go into either A or B or both. And we call this A union B. And I'll reiterate that again. The numbers in this section, in this set, have to be inside one circle or the other circle or both. They cannot be outside the circles. Union means it must be included in A or B. This one here, this little dash that you can see, B dash, means the complement of B and that's a really simple one. The complement of B, any numbers in this set here, so these numbers that have been listed, are not allowed to be in B. The complement of B means they must be outside the circle B. So let's just check again. We know what we're doing. We're putting the numbers 1 to 8 in this diagram. The numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 7 and 8 must be inside a circle 
and the numbers 2, 3, 5 and 6 must be outside of B. Let's see if we can go through again one step at a time. So the first element, 1. This number is going to be inside one of the circles because it's in the union of A and B but it's not allowed to be inside B. So it must go there. The number 2 Sorry, I've just realised I've done that wrong. <laughs> the number 1 is in the universal set. It's also got to be inside one of the circles. But it's not listed in the complement of B. Remember, these are the numbers which will be outside of B. If 1 is not outside of B, then 1 must be inside of B. and it could actually be there or inside here. I'm going to put it there for the moment. We'll come back to that number one, see if we can do anything else with it. Let's look at the number two. The number two is in the universal set. It's also inside one of the circles, but it's not inside B. Remember, anything in here, B dash, the complement of B, has to be outside the B circle. But remember that number 2 has got to be inside one of the circles. So it must be in circle A. Let's go for number 3, the third element. It's inside one of the circles because remember union means it must be inside one of these circles. So the number 2, sorry, the number 3 is inside a circle, but it's not allowed to be inside B. So it must also be over there. The number 4 is inside the union of A and B, so inside one of these circles. And this list here is for elements which are outside of B. 4 is not listed, so 4 must be here. And again, it, it's arguable that it could be in here as well, and we're not sure at the moment. haven't given you enough information. Let's look at number 5. Number 5 is not included in the union of A and B. It's outside of those two circles. And the same with number 6. Number 6 is not included in the union, so it must be outside the circle. Number 7 is in the union of A and B. And once again, it's not included in the complement of B. Remember, these numbers here have to be outside of circle B. Therefore, since 7 is not listed, 7 must be inside of circle B. And if you look, the same is true of 8. It's inside one of the circles and it's inside B. Now all these numbers here, it wasn't a very good question to set actually, all these numbers here could either be in this section or in that section. So you may well need some more information to be able to understand where they go in this Venn diagram. However, the key things to note are the dash means that these numbers are outside of B. They're not allowed to be inside B. So if we check that, these numbers inside B are different to these numbers. These numbers here are outside of B. This U symbol means union and it means contained within either A or B. So if we check, all these numbers here are either inside A or B or in that middle section. There is one more bit of notation that you may need, it comes up quite often, which is A intersection B. 
And this, very much like if you were um, traveling around America and you would find where two roads cross over. In the UK, we call it a crossroads. In America, they call it an intersection. It's where two things cross over. So if we look at this Venn diagram here, like this, we could say that five is in the intersection of A and B. The intersection is this bit here. So, in summary, you have a number of symbols that you need to learn. The first one, this chart, how do you say it? Xi. This defines all numbers that need to go in your Venn diagram. If you see a union B, this defines all the numbers that need to go in A or B, or both, remember. If you see A intersection B, these are numbers that need to go in the middle, so shared by both in that section there. And finally, if you see B dash, this means not allowed in the circle B. Those are your basic set notation symbols. There are a couple of other ones, um, but I'm going to keep it simple in this video and just try and keep it to the main ones.